I might be late, but I'm on time. This episode of Chasing Atlanta was giving what it was giving. Shout out to Derek, because if it wasn't for Derek, y'all wouldn't be getting this shit. It was giving what it was giving. So let's give it what we got. I'm the type of girl you call me. Yeah. What does the cat do? So this episode starts off with Dominique and Rico Castanon having a conversation about, you know, their differences and them not getting along. And it just kind of seems like Dominique is not over this. He just kind of acquiesces to the situation like whatever, you know, for the sake of having peace because he literally was like, I, I ain't never been maced before. And then he was like, well, let's just go outside and let me make you and get it over with. And I guess we could all assume that was a joke until he said his confessional, Everything is all cute and dandy until you try to get cute. And I got Bear Mace in the car. Bear Mace is like the Beyonce of Maces. It's like the top. It don't get much worse than Bear Mace. I'm sure what Rico Castanon sprayed you with was regular old, old Mace. Because you got all the way sprayed in the face. And you just kept walking like you was invincible to the shit. It was on Dario who should be ready to fucking cut a bitch. And then I'm not really too sure about your apology either because you gave an apology, but then you got in your confessional, which was filmed after the scene and was like, I'll accept her apology, but yada, yada, yada. It's not just about the one-sided apology. You gave an apology as well, unless it wasn't genuine. Drew gives the fabulous 50... No, it wasn't, no. It, the fantastic... Drew gives her group of friends tumblers they were real cute tumblers and child don't sleep on the tumblers because for somebody who was into fitness those tumblers really do work but she had gave everybody tumblers and was like thank y'all for being by my side these past few months have been really dark for me i was going through a deep depression i considered suicide a number of times and y'all were there for me in y'all own personal way so i love y'all and this is my token of appreciation now dominique at this point i don't know who he was talking about but he was like it's Fabulous Five, but it may... No, it's Fabulous Six, but it may be Fabulous Five because I'm not getting along with somebody... This, this is not about you, Dominique, so can we talk about something else? But then Jay Moore was like, I'm going to accept the gift, but I got a bone to pick with her because the whole time we was in pageant season, she was a total bitch to me. She just told you why. Can you not see the forest for the trees? She just told you why she was not herself this, this last few whatever. She just told you why. And then you get right in the confession and was like, she been a bitch to me, so we're gonna have to talk because I don't like the way she was treating me. Like this, ugh. Again, this goes back to when Latasha Scott felt like she wasn't getting her moment on R&B Divas at that table at Kiki Wide Dinner. And she just pulled a fucking random problem up out of her ass just so she could have 30 seconds of scene time. So now the crew goes out for the day. It was a cute little pier type of situation. I'm guessing it was like an all-in-one, maybe like a... a I don't know what the fuck it was, but it was cute. Everybody go take moonshine shots. And then Cameron was like, I want to have a moment, a sit down with Dominique and with Rico. Why Rico was even invited for the sit down, I don't know. They didn't, it wasn't bad enough for them to need a mediator. And Rico was in no way included into this situation, but whatever. So they all go outside and sit down and Cameron is just like, I, well, I'm paraphrasing. I hate to bring up Chicago again, but I just want to check in with you because the last time we talked about this and kind of checked in with each other was at the networking event. We kind of walked away kind of vague about where we stood and I just want to know where we are because I consider you family and after losing my son, I take family very seriously. So where are we? And after some cute discussion, Dominique was like, we're good. You know, I, I'm just in a place of reconciliation, girl. If I can forgive Croc... If I can forgive Rico Cassadine, then I can forgive anybody. We're good. Then we find out that Jay Amore is mad again. Girl, like, bitch, take a VA and just sit your ass down somewhere because you are out on vacation. You pay money to be on this vacation. You are going to spend money while you are here and you are upset about it? The person you are mad at is not only here, but it's also experiencing a level of unbotheredness that is eating you up more than you was when you first got here. So why are you letting him ruin your entire trip that you spent your money on, bitch? For nothing. 
Because according to you, he didn't already ruined your spa event that you spent money for. You just gonna keep letting him fuck over your money? That's what you should be mad at. The fact that every time you put your money into something that you want to enjoy, Cameron finds a way to fuck it up. Not the fact that he fucking up wine sales that never existed in the first place. Bitch, who the fuck is buying your wine? Before we knew you had wine, nobody knew you had wine. Before that moment, with all of the tweets, when he was trying all the different wines and you introduced it to the world, nobody knew you were fucking selling wine. So how did he fuck up your bag? And I know you're not talking about them fucking shoe dazzle boots you talk, girl, no, no. So apparently, Jaya Moore is mad because of an interview, because the, child, the goalposts keep changing. Now Jaya Moore is mad because of an interview that Cameron did. I'm guessing he and uh, Cameron and uh, I did this interview on the comment section. Shout out to the comment section. I was over there. My Wi-Fi was a fucking mess that night, so whatever. But shout out to y'all. But yeah, so basically he's mad because Cameron was like, if anybody should get booted off of the show, it should be Jaya Moore because he's not really giving anything. And Cameron was like, you creating all of this drama for nothing, bitch. I told you I was going to send a, a catty ass, snooty ass, what did he say, a, a shady gift to your event. I told you it was going to be Black Roses. I didn't want you to feel disrespected because me and you got some rapport and I wanted to make a scene, bitch. I told you it was going to happen and you sitting up here acting like you had no idea. And then out of nowhere, you got two of the most random people to do this. Kind of take a step back and be like, you guys, what's... Oliver gets in his confession and is like, wait a minute, ain't y'all friends? Ain't this y'all good girlfriend? Uh-uh, y'all shouldn't be having this conversation if she's not around. Because y'all already know. Bitch, please. And then Rico with the K gets up and takes, uh, I'm a, why do I want to call him Todd? He takes Troy outside, and I almost said it again, and he's like, I don't want to be involved. This ain't got nothing to do with me. This is not my business. So let's conspire up a plan to get them to have a conversation together because this ain't our business. You said in your confession, this ain't got shit to do with me and I don't want to be in the middle of it. So you went outside to have a separate conversation about the same incident that you didn't want to be a part of. And then you conspired to have, make them have a conversation with each other. It, it just, you know what I think Rico and I love you down. I think you was trying to say what you said outside, but you couldn't be heard because everybody was on 10. You said, bitch, I shall be, you are such a serious. I shall be heard, bitch. My plan will go according to plan. If it's one person in the audience or if it's 10, my plan is going to come to fruition. So he took the one person who you know was going to listen to him. And he took them outside and he said, bitch, this is what I had to say inside, but nobody was listening. And then Jay Moore has his big monologue moment. You know, in those movies, where like, you know, the, the big star gets the one monologue. You like, bitch, you gonna drive her home. This is his, and I am telling you moment. You know what he thought this was gonna be? He thought this was gonna be his super trailer moment. He thought this was gonna be in the super trailer. And that he was gonna have a little boom moment. You know, girl, on Dario didn't give you no boom in your confessional. They didn't play no suspenseful music, girl. It was, it was fiddle faddle because that's all you was spitting out. You was, eh, and he did this. And he did that. And I'm just like, what? You claim Cam started all of this BS when he brought the flowers to your event. He told you. He told you. So you knew and you were still, eh, and you throwing everything in. A, you created a scene out of no, nobody in the whole situation was upset but you. And you shared this event with Oliver and he wasn't even upset by it. So it, it was you who created an event out of nothing, girl. Like everybody was trying to chill and enjoy the spa day and you got all up in arms, carried the vase all the way over to the trash can and threw it away. But here's my thing. If you have such an issue with Cameron, then why didn't you take Willa up on her advice? She was like, y'all need to bring it to the table and have a conversation. Uh -uh. I'm, first of all, you became Donald Trump in that situation. You became Amber Heard in that situation. She asked you one thing and you answered a totally different question. She said, so why don't y'all have a conversation? Why don't y'all put it on the table? Equals, why don't you and Cameron talk? Have a private conversation. Your response was, I'm not going to go on camera and have no interviews and talk about you. I'm not. She never asked you to do that. She asked you to talk to him personally. I'm not going to go on live. And she never asked you to do that. 
She never asked you to do anything that you said she wasn't gonna do. Cool, you're not gonna do any of that. Okay, can you talk about what the fuck I mentioned? And then you got Rigo Cassadon, who I know was full of that moonshine, just. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I knew it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Girl, girl, you cannot be straddling the fence because when you sit up in that room with, with camera and, and Wayne, you had camera size. You sure did say that. Mm -hmm. So why would he feel it? Like, whatever. You just, you... Which is it? Speaking of which, we here now. So, um, uh, Rico Cassadon and Wayne chilling in the bedroom. Mm hmm. And Rico tells him about the whole Jan Moore situation. I don't know where Wayne was because Kendra had walked up right in the nigga time to catch that little piece of tea that they was fucking the whole time. And she was like, ooh, God, but you look at these hand marks. They don't sell for two fucking dollars. She didn't want to be a part of it. But she she also didn't sell Wayne. So Wayne was like, what? I swear to God, right hand. Oh, that's, this is my right hand. Right hand, girl, I did not know. Oh, my God. And while they talking about Cameron, Cameron walks in. Uh, he has a blunt. So, girl, the party is gonna stop because we need to focus on what you got in your hand, honey. And he comes in, they start talking or whatever, and Cameron lays it out like, why are you so pressed about this whole situation? Like, everybody is cool and you is all up in arms for nothing at all. Again, he is retelling the story and this is what really kills me. Y'all both say, I refuse to talk to the other person. So what I am going to do is I'm going to talk to everybody else who asks me about it and give them the entire story. I'm going to regurgitate this as many times as necessary. But I ain't going to talk to the person who, who needs to hear. Mm -mm. The, the one conversation that I need to have that's going to dare all this shit and there's going to be no more conversation after this, I'm refusing to have. Which lets me know that y'all like this shit, obviously. Y'all like what y'all have going on. Y'all like the fact that y'all have a storyline. Because if the one thing that will bring this shit to a close is the one thing that y'all are refusing to do, we can't stop. Y'all don't, y'all don't want to stop this. Y'all ain't gonna stop till y'all get enough. So now we are down to the pajama night. It's taco night, so it's safe to say that, girl, unless everybody got a full supply of pure for men, everything is gonna be oral on tonight. And so everybody's in their PJs, they negligees, they eating their little fish and fajita tacos. And Jay Moore is mad. Again. Finally, he wants to have a come. He, this was his, I just think it's funny how moment. Everybody, not everybody, but everybody is watching him do that. He, he got his little Stevie J, like he is pissed, girl. Like he is mad. And so naturally, I would say, bitch, in 5, 4, 3, 2, um, I, why are you upset? I don't, you know what? I just find it funny how and he just kind of spewed it out. The whole time he talking, Cameron is chewing, honey, because Cameron is like, I don't have time for this. Like, I don't want to be, in, uh, move away from me with this Apollo. Like, girl, like, we have both said that we don't want to talk about it and we're going to talk to everybody else, so let's do that. Let's coexist and let me just continue my tacos and enjoy my night. I've been watching like body language analysis videos, so I was reading all up and through this. According to my studies and my teachings and my and my theories, it was deception all up and through what Jay had going on. Jay, and we're not gonna even talk about the body language. Let's just talk about what you said. You brought up the comment section, and as soon as somebody was there, I had to say. This is not what happened. Maybe you didn't watch it. You combated him with, yes, I did, and you jumped right on to Kendra. You said he was saying disrespectful things, and you led that conversation to, and he offered Kendra a dress. At the end of the day, y'all could have played that shit off. Because Kendra tried to play, like, he, he offered me a dress, but I didn't want the one that he had, and I'm coming. It, it was just something simple, but you were so... Hell bent on everybody being convinced that it was shade that he said it. He ain't had no dress. He ain't. who the fuck cares? We are here now, and Kendra is here with a brand new set of titties, and her nipples are as large as the room we are sitting in. So why do we care about a dress that she did or did not wear months ago? Then you moved on to, and you never apologized, you never did. And Karen was like, no, I apologized three different times. Everybody co-signed, and when they co-signed, you then said, where was that apology? Maybe I'm missing something, because for real, I don't know. 
That's exactly what you said. I don't know. I'm not gonna put in the little screen grabs because bitch, I ain't got time. I need to get to the gym. You said, I don't know. Then, when people started co-signing, Cameron was like, no, he apologized. Suddenly you remembered. No, 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 it was a backhanded apology. This is what you said. You repeated him verbatim. Five seconds ago, you, you, you had no knowledge of an apology. Now you not only know an apology existed, you know the entire script of the apology. And you just don't like the way it was presented. You don't like the type of apology you got. Was it backhanded or did no apology exist at all? And then like, oof. When the counselor, he's a counselor, so I don't really want, I don't want to discredit him, but girl, you need degreed help. So you need to talk to somebody because this, this is what's fucking you up. You're only a joke to everybody in your mind. You only lost all that money on that deal in your mind. Cameron is only fucking with you in your mind. If you pay him the same does he paying you, this trip could have been one for the books, honey. You fucked it up. And I'm only saying this from a place of experience because I have fucked up a many of situations because I lived in here instead of out here. You got mad because nobody took... Nobody wanted to just sit here and have a come to Jesus Iyala Van Zant moment. We all recognized what you had going on and we moved the fuck on. We continued with our night. We kept laughing. We kept joking. We kept fellowshipping. And you couldn't take. You wanted to. I want y'all to be as mad as I am. And because y'all are not, fuck y'all. I am going to take my, my robe and I'm going to leave in a huff. And I'm going to act like I'm getting my shit together. But then I'm going to sit on the side of the bed and I'm going to be mad all night. For what? The only night that was ruined was yours. Do you not realize you pissed yourself off even more? No, ma'am. Fuck that and fuck them. They not worth it. Nobody is worth I love y'all. I love y'all whole, the whole cast. I love y'all down. Nobody, not even y'all mamas, is worth y'all. Don't let nobody take your joy from you. And Cam girl, Cameron won. Cameron won. Especially given the fact that you didn't even know what you wanted. Most people ask you, what do you want from this JMO? I want my respect. Okay, you yelling about respect, but how you gonna get it if you're not willing to have a conversation and receive the respect? What do you want? And you the fuck about and pissed up. We're going with the chaos. He's trying to fix the situation like he's trying to do with everybody. And you get to hollering at him. He said, oh, bitch, now wait a minute. Okay, I may be sugar sweet and nice. But bitch, what you will not do is come at me like I'm your child. No, ma'am. And in his own way, because I don't think he's very combative, but in his own way, we go with the K, gather your ass, Miss J. Amore. And speaking of gathering, Willa, that's how you gather a bitch. Mama, you gave it to Oliver. So straightforward. No chaser. So pure. So bitch, I'm not finna argue with you. This is what it is. So if you say this, then what? Then what? Oliver, you had a point. The girls want to spew all this shit up and act like ain't nothing going on. I don't know. Girl, I hate situations like that. That's why I'm, I'm one of the main people to be like, is there a problem here? You know, it's a, I'm only going to sit with it for so long. And if you want to get up under my skin, let me know that there's a problem. Let me know that you know that there's a problem when I ask you about it. Uh-uh, uh-uh, girl. I, there is no problem. Bitch, you fucking lying. And I'm trying to stop the customer. Bitch, you lying. So I see where you coming from, Oliver. But Willa had a point. Every time shit gets started, your name is somewhere in the mix. You not, you may not be in the mix of the business, in the minutiae, but you the one that's saying, on your mark, get set, bitch. You swinging the flag, bitch. You, you giving the go ahead. You giving a green light. Shout out to John Legend, girl. You is giving it. That's you. And she handed it to your ass. I'm glad you said it, but don't. What she want? Are you threatening? No, she not threatening you, bitch. She don't want your crown. She don't want none of that. She just wants to call your ass out. Period. That was the episode, y'all. It gave what it gave, so I gave it what I had. Make sure you are liking, commenting, subscribing, and that the notifications are on. Same place, same time.